एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल माय नेम इज पीयूष एंड दिस इज वीडियो नंबर 16 इन द सीरीज सी के एंड इन दिस वीडियो विल बी लुकिंग इनटू रिसोर्स रिक्वेस्ट्स एंड लिमिट्स व्हिच इज अनदर कांसेप्ट दैट स्केड्यूलर यूज टू स्केड्यूल द पॉड्स ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर नोड और अ सेट ऑफ नोड्स या टिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ अदर इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट्स लाइक ओके आई एम नॉट गोना बोर यू विद दैट सो वी हैव कवर्ड एनफ in the past 15 videos so check that out if you have missed anything if you are already following along so let's continue with this video and the comments and like target of this video is 180 likes and 180 comments so make sure you complete that target in the next 24 hours and i will upload the next video as soon as the target is completed so without any further ado let's start with the video okay so let's say uh, we'll first have a look at the example uh, with the help of this diagram and then we'll do uh, you know we have few exercises that we'll do today to understand this concept in depth so we have two nodes okay node 1 and node 2 over here so node 1 let's say has four cpus and four uh, gigabytes of memory and node 2 has the similar specification four cpus four gb of memory now there are multiple pods so you see each one of them is a pod and these pods required certain cpu and certain memory for the execution because pod underneath is nothing but an encapsulation of a container and inside the container we run a particular process and that process basically does the computing does something and it needs a cpu and memory disk and other resources to do the execution right so each one of these pods let's say requires a uh, one cpu and one memory so first scheduler checks uh, the available node and let's say this node has the sufficient limit it will schedule the pod it will do the same for other pod side as well it will go and check uh, other things like tens tolerations node selectors affinity and everything else and based on that it will make the scheduling decision and it will try to uh, schedule the pod one by one or like in multiple threads that's uh, how it will do the scheduling and let's say once the node reaches it limits so let's say now this node is full it will try to schedule this pod but it will not be able to schedule but because it does not have the sufficient resources so it will find the next node and it will schedule the pod on this node now both of the nodes are running at its full capacity we don't have enough resources now whenever a next pod comes in it will try to go on this node it will error out like we don't have sufficient resources it will check the other node it will error out again it will say that like, we don't have sufficient resources so this pod or any of the pod comes after this it will stuck with this error sufficient resources insufficient resources or insufficient cpu memory something like that right so this pod will not be scheduled that's why uh, we actually specify request limit so uh, your uh, kubernetes does this calculation for you like how many have been utilized how many is pending and how many more do you need and so on now let's see if we have one single node with again four cpu four memory and there is one pod okay in which it requires we know it requires one cpu and one memory but we have not specified this somewhere in the pod so we have not specified how much it should take or how much it should request what is the limit of it so we are not bounding it to a certain uh, resource boundaries so let's say it started with one cpu and one memory but as soon as the load increases on that it tries to take the entire node memory and pod so now it takes entire node memory four cpu and four memory and after that when it tries to take more than that the pod will be crashed and this time the pod will be crashed with om error out of memory it can go beyond the uh, available cpu that's what where we call it as cpu throttling but with the memory it will fail with the error out of memory and this node will also start the om killer that means the node will also start throwing any pods with the om error because this node does not have sufficient resources now everything is been occupied by this pod this particular pod took all the resources from the node now node does not have anything left to be scheduled so that is why to avoid all these scenarios we actually specify request and limits in the pod in the container so that whenever the pod try to take more memories than its allowed limit the pod will be crashed 
So not the node, the pod will be crashed with the OOM killer. Okay, so let's uh, do a quick demo. Actually, we'll be doing uh, a lot of tasks. So let's uh, have a look at that. So first I'm gonna do the cleanup of all the existing resources. Okay, delete pod. We have Redis, Redis 3 and Redis new. Okay, those have been deleted now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my day 16 folder and inside that there'll be a metric server YAML. So metric server is something, I uh, will not go into the detail of that, but metric server is something that actually exposes the metrics of your nodes. So it will expose the CPU memory utilization and these important metrics so that it can be used further with different processes like we have auto scaling which we'll be looking into later so VPA, HPA, all those concepts so this actually exposes the metrics to those processes so that it will take the action for now let's understand we actually have to apply this YAML first and after that I'm, I'm going to show you what it will do so if we'll do kubectl apply hyphen f yeah, I'm not in the correct folder. So day 16. And if we do keep CTL apply hyphen F metrics server dot YAML. Okay, because I have already have it running. That's why it says configured and unchanged. But uh, for you, it will it will create few resources. We have role bindings. So these concept I'm not explaining because we have not really covered those yet. So it will be covered in the later videos, cluster role binding, uh, service accounts, service and deployments we have already seen, right? Uh, props, uh, these are, we have not seen yet, okay? So it will create few resources, few Kubernetes objects for you. And after that, your metric server, there is an additional pod running. So if you do kubectl get pods in the kube system namespace, because this is a Kubernetes add-on, so it will be running in the control plane node. So if we do that and you see there is a pod running with the name metric server. And now if we do kubectl top, let's say kubectl top node. Right. So it will, let me clear the screen and run this command again. So it will now shows the CPU utilization like 5% for the first node. 0 and 1 percent for the other nodes, so memory utilization in bytes and so on, right? So these metrics are being exposed now because of the help of metric server. Metric server did that for us. And now using these resources, actually CPU and memory, we can now uh, do some stress testing on, on this Kubernetes cluster and we'll actually, okay, let me show you what we'll do. So first uh, we'll create a new namespace. Okay, let's call this namespace as memory example. So kubectl create namespace and mem example. Okay, namespace has been created. Now we'll create a new pod inside this namespace. So we'll go to memory request.yaml. This is the YAML that we have. Okay, let's see what it does. So it has a pod uh, with this name memory demo CTR and it uses uh, an image Polynex stress. So this image was specifically built to do the stress testing on your cluster. Okay, it will put some pressure on the nodes based on our arguments that we have passed and you can see the results. So now this is how we actually specify request and limits. Right. So inside containers, because resources like CPU, memory, these are the resources of a container. So it has to be the child of the container. So that's why it's inside the container. And then we have two properties, request and limit. Now request can be of memory and CPU. So you can add CPU as well over here. And again, limits can be of memory and CPU. Right. For now, let's just remove the CPU and we'll just have the memory for now. Now what it will do, this pod will request 100 MI. So this is not uh, megabytes, this is MI. This is a different uh, measurement unit. It's, it, it has slightly different calculation, but it's almost the same as let's say MB. So let's say we have 100 MI of memory is the request. That's mean this is what it will allocate uh, to the pod, this memory will be allocated to the pod and the at the very beginning. 
and as soon as it starts working it cannot go beyond 200 mb it can go up to 200 mb and after that this pod will be killed if we don't specify this limits right then this pod can take whatever memory the node has and it can end up killing the node so that is why specifying request and limit is very important right so we specify a lower bound like 100 mb and we specify an upper bound 200 mb and then with the help of command so we have already seen commands and arguments so with the help of the command stress we are assigning 150 mb to this particular pod so we are actually overriding this limit and we are saying okay you can use up to 150 mb okay so let's see what will happen so kubectl apply hyphen f mem request the yaml name was mem request.yaml okay and there is one more thing so i i actually forgot to tell this earlier so when we create a namespace and we have to create resources inside the namespace there are two ways of doing that first is with the apply command or whatever command we are using let's say imperative command we add the namespace along with it like use this yaml to create the file in this particular namespace or there is one more thing instead of doing that we can do that within yaml itself so inside the metadata where the name is at the same level we can specify namespace right so this part will be created in this namespace okay so if we do apply this yaml and let's say kubectl clear the screen get pods hyphen n mem example okay the pod is running and let's run the top pod on this top pod and memory demo hyphen n mem example or name is memory demo and the namespace is mem example okay maybe it takes some time to generate the matrix so now uh, when we do top pod again it now shows that it takes 364 cpu because we have not specified any limits or request for cpu but it takes around 150 mi of the memory right so it will be able to schedule that's not an issue it's within the limit it's within 100 and 200 mb or mi now let's go ahead and look at the other yaml over here so i have made some changes in this yaml now the request is 50 and memory uh, limit is 100 and now we are overriding it with 2 250 mb which is more than the allowed limit so it goes beyond that so let's see what will happen now the pod name is already changed memory demo to so let's see what will happen now if we do kubectl apply hyphen f mem2.yaml created get pods hyphen n mem example okay it says the pod is om killed and if we do describe on this describe pod and then hyphen n memory example i have made a mistake in the command name okay now let's see what it says it says back off failed container okay and if we go a little up go up go up go up it also says the reason is om killed that means the pod was trying to acquire memory that is more than its allowed limit and that's why it failed instead of failing the entire node we actually prefer to fail the pod so that a new pod can be created or so that we can adjust the limits and request for that and if we do a top pod again so top pod on memory demo 2 you won't find any metrics because the pod itself is not scheduled okay now let's look at another example we go with memory 3 and now what we did we set the memory request and limits more than we have available inside the node okay and we are overriding it with 150 mb so we have seen uh, two examples till now where our pod requested the memory within the allowed limits and request like 100 and 200 mb and it was 150 mb then the second example we see 
where the pod requested more than the allowed limit. And now we are setting the memory request and limit to 1000 GB or 1000 GI, which is even more than we have available inside our node. So let's see what happens now. If we do kubectl apply hyphen f and mem3.yaml created get pods hyphen m mem example or it was memory exam yeah mem example so this pod is now stuck in the pending state and if we do a uh, describe on this and hyphen n mem example Let's see the error that it says insufficient. So first error is with the taint and toleration of Kubernetes control plane node. Then the second is insufficient memory preemption, zero three nodes are available and so on, right? So we don't have the sufficient memory inside our node to schedule that pod. The pod needs thousand GI. We don't have that memory. So please make the changes over here. Try to adjust this to a lower number so that this pod can be scheduled. So this is um, what I wanted to show you the importance of request and limits. Why do we use it and what happens when we actually go beyond the requested memory? So the stress test that we did over here as well. Uh, let's say 250 MB. This is just to simulate the real world example. Like let's say there is an application running with 50 MI or 50 MB as the request. It started with this and the limit was 100 MB, but then something happened and it occupies all the memory. Let's say there's a memory leak or there is a increased uh, traffic on the particular pod and it actually consumed all the available memory. Memory utilization reaches to 100%. After that, what should happen? The pod has to crash. So that's what happening here when it, it actually tries to uh, occupy more than the available limits. It is crashing the pod with OM error out of memory. We don't have the enough memory for this particular pod. Right. And in the last case, um, the one that we saw over here, it was actually requesting the memory that is available. So that's why it is not even scheduling the pod. It says that uh, insufficient memory. We don't have enough memory available for this pod to be scheduled. All right. So that's it for this video as well. Uh, I hope now the concept of request and limits uh, is more clear now and you will be able to implement that. By the way, uh, you can always refer to Kubernetes documentation, kubernetes.io slash docs. Uh, I have already provided this information that uh, this particular domain and all of its subdomain will be available in the exam and you can keep that handy to check any syntax, to check any commands over there. You know, uh, the more you practice, the more you will be uh, habitual of uh, working with it. So that's uh, what I wanted to say. And uh, as always, there'll be uh, an assignment task in the day 16 video folder inside the GitHub repository. Try to complete that. And if you face any issue, try to reach out to us on Discord or YouTube and uh, you will be able to uh, get your answers and uh, try to help others as well. So yeah, uh, try to complete the target of comments and likes for this video and I will see you with the next video as soon as the target is complete or within the next 24 hours. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good learning experience so far. So thank you so much.